Hey everybody, this is Mike with Accounting for Cycling. In this video, uh, we will be going through some upgrades and features of the ASUS FA507R Tough Series A15 notebook. Uh, so this is a gaming notebook with a NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti and then also a 6800 uh, Ryzen 7 processor. So all pretty new parts and a pretty well balanced machine for just kind of some uh, more entry level basic gaming. Uh, does pretty well in first person shooters. Um, it has a 144 hertz refresh rate screen. Uh, so responsive, nice overall machine. Um, and after I go through some of the internal guts and upgrading it from 8 gigs of RAM, uh, which is a 4800 megahertz uh, DDR5 stick, um, arguably the only real downside to this computer is that it's limited to the 8 gigabytes of RAM that, are, that comes from the factory inside of it. Uh, but overall, like most Asus uh, notebooks, they're pretty easy to open up and upgrade. Uh, you can see here you've got what's that, 7, 11, 12 screws uh, on the bottom here. And we'll go ahead and start opening these. And I'm using my iFixit toolkit here, uh, which I purchased myself for doing these kinds of videos. This laptop uh, it is not a sponsored video, uh, but I did receive this as a member of Best Buy's Tech Insider program. Um, as a reviewer in this invitation-only program, I am provided products for the purpose of writing honest, non-biased reviews. So I did not purchase the laptop. Uh, I do get to keep it, which is pretty cool. That's kind of one of the better benefits of this program. Uh, I've actually received quite a bit of tech from it. Uh, and yeah, uh, <laughs> I was a little uncertain about it at first. The initial email I got back in 2016 when I joined the Tech Insider program uh, definitely looked like spam, and I found a pretty sketchy uh, web forum on one of Best Buy's uh, user forums that kind of explained it, but didn't really go into too much detail. And these two front corner screws might be captive. I do like it when they're captive. Um, just makes it easier to keep track of. Um, but it would be kind of nice if they were yeah, labeled anyway. Uh, it seems to be kind of an industry standard at this point. But as I'm unscrewing these now, it will kind of... I've already done the initial testing uh, using multiplayer mode in Battlefield 5. Um, I'm still terrible at that. Um, I also played Grand Theft Auto 5 on the system. It did pretty well. Uh, stayed right around the 60 frames. Uh, you know, you're not going to use super ultra settings on everything, but it kept up pretty well at 1080p high. A uh, couple of minor dips with some busier areas, uh, but for some reason GTA 5 is just a game that can be pretty taxing on a lot of equipment. Um, none of the games I played though got really at all close to the 144 hertz to match with that, um, with the obvious exception of uh, CSGO. Um, I think that kind of goes without saying that you can run that game on pretty much anything and get a decent performance out of it. And the kit of RAM that we're going to put in the machine is a uh, 16 gig 2x8 set uh, of Kingston Fury memory dual sided DIMMs. So they actually have memory on both sides. As mentioned in some of my previous videos, I am no expert on that. Um, I'm just kind of taking 
uh, gamers nexus's word that their testing is much better than mine now a huge change that they've done recently is around the ports the bottom plastic lid does not go up the side uh, which is a huge plus uh, from some previous ASUS systems that I've had uh, where removing the bottom you were basically guaranteed to crack the plastic around the USBs and the HDMI. Alright so this is the bottom of the FA507R and you've got this little shield here you can see very nice cooling system under here with uh, dual fans multiple heat pipes um, you can remove these covers with the heat pipes uh, so down the road to uh, replace the thermal paste uh, you can easily get to that I'm going to kind of to carefully remove this just your SSD which is right here under the silver shielding um, and then your single stick of 8 gig RAM which we'll remove here and fairly basic stick uh, also has some metal I'm guessing this is for heat but let's see moving that unveils try to get it in focus here Samsung 8 gig, one row, 4800 RAM. So you can see there's only one rank of memory. So we can probably just slap that back on here. At this time, I have no other systems that have DDR5 RAM, and I don't even know what I would use a single stick for. So, we'll just store that away for later. Put it in the pile of unused RAM that's growing in my closet, which does come in handy. Uh, on my Alienware X17, I had an issue where I was inside of the Alienware control center, and it had an option to overclock the RAM in there. So, like an idiot, I trusted the software not to break the computer, and it did. So, I had to put its 16 gig original RAM kit back in, um, which allowed it to go to the 3200 megahertz it's capable of. Um, and then after it was able to boot, reset the Alienware control center, and then put my 32 gig sticks in. Oh, this is also only single rank, so. All right, well, I mean, either way, 16 gigs is hopefully going to boost performance. Per there we go. And Kingston also gives you a sticker if you want to advertise that you've put some uh, theory impact whatever RAM uh, into your system. I think for the most part, the performance should speak for itself. Um, I don't know, for where this is going to end up going, I might just tell them eventually that you know, it has Kingston RAM in. So next we'll install the solid state drive. So this solid state drive, um, still some thermal padding on it from I had it inside of an SSD enclosure. Um, it used to be in my desktop, and it's just a Samsung, I think it's a 980 SSD. You know what? I had it on the back of the cover. Yes, SSD 980, and it is a 500 gig stick. So. Not massive storage. Um, you know, I could put more in there, but I don't know. 500 gigs to complement the 512 that's already in um, is going to give a pretty nice boost to storage. Plus, it's 
pretty easy to upgrade down the row. And Asus was kind enough to actually right inside the chassis include the mounting screw. Uh, that's something that I have been displeased about with uh, Dell in the past is they'll give you the second slot for memory, but then you also have to get, uh, they have this slider mechanism, which if you look at my G7 7700 video, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's an extra like 20 or $30 part that is required if you want to upgrade the SSD. Now the slot that comes with it does already have that. And the reason they include it is it can work with uh, really any size SSD, uh, which is pretty cool. But before we put the cover back on, let me make sure I've got this all on here fairly straight. So there we are. And that just protects any connections that might be open from hitting any part of the uh, bottom of the bottom of the chassis, which has the kind of metallic coating on the plastic. So inside here, you'll see that we have a 56 watt hour battery. You can see also there's obviously room for growth in other versions of the A15. Um, pretty nice speakers that are downward firing. They're also like many of the gaming laptop speakers, uh, kind of isolated on rubber buffers. So you don't really get a lot of shaking, but you get pretty decent bass and pretty okay clarity. Um, on Once we flip this over the front, you'll notice it says up to four f exhaust ports. Uh, you'll notice this one has three, which is kind of the indicator too that it's more of a base model. So it does have kind of this blanked out spot here and this empty space inside the chassis. Uh, clearly meant for an additional exhaust port on um, probably the 3060, I believe this laptop can go up to a 3070 uh, graphics chip. So, you know, need that little bit extra cooling. From my testing so far, uh, the machine really doesn't get all that hot. Um, I never experienced anything on the keyboard that would be uncomfortable for use. Um, but in more powerful models, you may potentially come across that. Uh, sound really isn't bad either. It only once it really ramps up does it get that kind of jet engine sound that gaming laptops are well known for. So before we do the boring part of putting all the screws back on, we'll flip this back over and you can see yeah, it's a pretty handsome design, metal cover, um, good backfiring exhaust ports here, and the uh, cutout here on top, so you can actually open the screen, and it gives you a nice lower profile chassis, small form factor, and you can also still um, have the exhaust go out without hitting the screen. Now, I think you could possibly call this uh, another exhaust port. Um, I personally would not. But also, intake on the bottom is pretty solid. You've got some good ventilation down there. Uh, neither of the intakes have a filter of sorts over them. Um, so you do want to make sure to dust the system out from time to time. Um, which, you know, 12 screws can possibly get annoying, uh, but it's a task that's well worth it. Moment of truth. All right, and we have the indicator lights firing up. Here, I'm going to turn off 
lights. So you can see the, the keyboard actually, it does have RGB backlighting, but it's all one single zone, uh, which is more than acceptable at uh, this price point level of 1050 US dollars. Uh, so you do have the Asus Armory Crate button. Um, I believe it comes disabled on the box. Your microphone muting. Uh, it will give you a notification on the screen, uh, but it does not change the color of the button at all. Uh, volume down, volume up. And I do enjoy too that uh, so a, a gaming laptop at this price point is more likely probably going to go to somebody who's an esports gamer, uh, somebody who wants to do some gaming on the side, a little bit of light um, productivity work for uh, graphic design, videos, photo editing, but also probably somebody who's going to use it a lot and primarily for school, whether that be, um, you know, primary, secondary, um, or collegiate level. Um, so it's nice to have the 10 key number pad over here. Um, and it also helps to offset the keyboard a little bit um, from the very generously sized touchpad down here. So that your WASD keys actually put your, almost your entire hand and palm off of the touchpad which you can disable in software uh, or through your function button here. So that's also nice to have as well. Uh, your Windows key also is disableable um, and you can also turn off the number pad as well uh, with obviously your num lock button. So a lot of customization available, uh, different configurations. I'm going to show off some of the different lighting here so can, these are just through the quick colors and then this is obviously just off so it allows you to kind of show off a little bit of personalization uh, I don't know, for some reason, I kind of just like the green keys with this system. Um, it came, I believe, with this yellow. And yeah, that's fine too. Uh, my keyboards, I usually do more of like a darker blue, navy blue. Um, this green just works with it. Um, but full size keyboard. Um, it's a little bit compacted on the sides. Typing experience is still pretty good. There's good key travel, uh, good feedback to them. Uh, you can slide around to different letters and numbers pretty easily uh, using just kind of a standard hand layout. Your right hand does kind of come off the side a little bit to avoid the touchpad. Uh, but if you've been using laptops with larger touchpads or even just gaming laptops for a pretty long time, um, and especially with Ultrabooks, you get kind of used to having your right arm kind of cocked out here um, so you don't touch the touchpad. Um, and it has decent palm rejection, so that's pretty good too. This is the my Lavalier microphone right up against one of the fans. Here's the exhaust. And as I pull that back towards me, uh, you can see it's a pretty minor volume level, uh, which is real nice. It's a nice quiet computer, uh, good battery life too. See if it defaulted. Excellent. So we've got 4,800 megahertz here. Both slots used. We've got our 16 gigs up here. Um, here we are 3050 Ti, Radeon graphics, 6800H, Ryzen 7. Overall, it is a nice, solid, pretty lightweight. I believe it's just over four pounds. 15.6 uh, inch laptop.
the fiscal form factor is a little closer to a traditional 14 inch, uh, which is really nice. The slim bezels definitely help out with that. It does have um, a dual microphone system with an integrated webcam above the screen. Uh, it gives it this little lip on top, but that's actually kind of nice because you can use that to open the screen nice and easily. Uh, Mux switch. So you can have an actual uh, switch to use either the integrated graphics on the screen or it will flip to the dedicated graphics to use on your integrated screen. Without that mock switch, what happens is your dedicated graphics inside the system has to run back through the integrated to your screen. Um, loses you a little bit of performance versus using an external monitor or a system that has a mock switch. Um, out of the box, the system will come in a hybrid mode, so it'll do a smart selection between uh, which is best for that situation, whether you're web browsing, word processing, light gaming, heavy gaming, um, and also on AC power or battery power. My battery testing is kind of netted around seven hours um, of just kind of light video watching, um, productivity type work on Excel, and um, just general web browsing. Uh, nothing too crazy, mostly because the system only had 8 gigs of RAM prior, and anybody who's pretty well versed with uh, Chrome will know that Chrome likes to take any memory you have, and it does not like only 8 gigs. But I believe that uh, covers our quick overview here. Um, thank you for watching. Um, again, this is Mike with Accounting for Cycling. If you like this video, please check out my other videos on my channel. Um, please subscribe so you get the latest updates on new content. And um, hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Thank you so much and have a great day.